You ever been to Mars? In my brain I have, you know, in my dreams I have. I heard there are some pretty terrifying things going on. Well, I mean, hey, there's a reason why in the 50s Martians were always talked about as like the scariest threat to humanity. So yeah. maybe they had some. Maybe, let's, uh, let's find out what. So what color is Mars? Well, everything is, you know, brownish, orangish, kind of gray, right? Well, that's what we thought until very recently when a bright white rock was spotted on the red planet. NASA's Perseverance rover recently made a pretty intriguing discovery on Mars, a 14 inch high boulder dubbed a taco point. A taco point stands out not only because of its size, but also, I mean, just look at it. It measures 18 inches wide and has a light toned surface speckled with minerals identified as pyroxene and feldspar. It has an unusual size, shape, and arrangement of mineral grains and crystals. It's unlike any of the rocks that surround it. Scientists are debating the origins of a taco point. Some think it may have formed outside the area it's sitting in and was transported there by ancient water flows. But of course, we're all kind of hoping the rock just isn't even from Mars originally. As to who brought it there, that's the fun part. Next up, we have Morse code. Well, not actually Morse code, but also maybe. I'm talking about the Hagel Dune Field, located below the North Pole of Mars, discovered in February of 2016. What's cool about these dunes is that they make no sense, unless of course someone or something created them. While the dashes or lines in the dunes are pretty standard, created by winds blowing against each other from opposite directions to create a rise in the loose earth, forming the dash dunes, the dots are incredibly peculiar because generally formations like this only appear when something or someone has interrupted the formation of the linear dunes, begging the question, what could have possibly interrupted the formation? The answer is certainly something to look forward to, although I've already got a pretty good guess. Also, if you do read Morse code and there is actually something written within these many dots and dash dunes, let me know what it says down below. NASA is pretty excited about a hole that was recently discovered on Mars. Now, a hole may not sound all that exciting at first, but the thing is, who knows what could be down there? And potential caves on Mars would be a huge asset for future crewed missions. We could set up bases below ground. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured an image on August 15th of 2022. It was a small pit on the surface near the Arcea Mons volcano. The pit is just a few meters across, but we don't know how deep it is. There have been other pits spotted near Mars volcanoes, and these pits could be entrances to larger underground caverns. With Mars's thin atmosphere unable to shield against space radiation like Earth's, underground caverns would provide shelter for astronauts. And of course, there's the potential for life. On Earth, we have what are called karsts, which uh, form when limestone dissolves, creating networks of caves and sinkholes underground. If Martian pits are anything like karsts, they could have been warm, sheltered places that supported life a long time ago. Next up, we have the discovery of Mars's Four Seasons, and I'm not talking about the hotel. Four very uneven seasons, that is. The length of which change depending on where you're located on the red planet. All right, let's break it down. One year on Mars is made up of 668.59 Martian solar days, which equal about 687 Earth days. Basically, making it through one year on Mars is the same as making it through almost two on Earth. In the northern hemisphere of the planet Mars, spring lasts for seven Earth months, summer for 6, fall for 5.3, and winter for just over 4. Of course, even with it being summer, the northern hemisphere of Mars never really reaches temperatures exceeding negative 20 degrees Celsius. In the southern hemisphere, however, things are a bit different. Summers are hot and quick, while winters are drawn out and cold. Extremely cold. The extreme contrast between the two hemispheres is what causes those massive dust storms you see on Mars. Not necessarily terrifying, but probably pretty scary to witness up close and be a part of. And also, we need to know this stuff if we're planning on moving there someday. Scientists have been trying to figure out why there are methane spikes on Mars. Methane is a gas that on Earth is mostly produced by living organisms like plants, animals, and microbes. It can also come from geological processes like the interaction of water with certain types of rock, so finding methane on Mars raises a 
big question. Is it being made by some form of life or is it just a chemical reaction happening underground? NASA's Curiosity rover first detected methane spikes back in 2013. The methane levels increased in a short period before dropping back down. This was really surprising because methane doesn't last long in Mars's thin atmosphere. Sunlight and chemical reactions break it down within a few hundred years, so whatever is producing this methane has to be active right now. One theory is that the methane is being released from underground reservoirs. These could be pockets of methane trapped in ice, released in the gas during warmer seasons, or it could be getting released because of underground activity. There could also be microbes like the ones that live in extreme environments here on Earth, but we still don't have a definitive answer. And that's pretty cool. Next up, we have a discovery made in 2015 that has caused NASA scientists to question everything. Okay, well, not everything, but definitely some stuff. You see, while exploring the desert like surface of Mars, the Curiosity rover just so happened to stumble upon Maria's Pass, a geological contact zone where two different rocks make contact. In this case, a layer of sandstone sits atop a bed of mudstone. In the area, there is also a large concentration of silica, which is quite common on Earth as it's found in rocks and minerals, primarily quartz, as well as glass, sand, silicone, and granite. What's interesting, however, is the fact that in order for such a large concentration of silica to occur, water must be present. And so uncovering this pass filled with a high concentration of silica is a major step in understanding what Mars would have looked like at a time when its waters were free flowing. And then of course there's a the matter of tritomite, which was also discovered on the past. Like silica, tritomite does exist on Earth, but unlike silica, tritomite is incredibly rare. Unlike Earth, however, Mars has an abundance of this mineral, leading scientists to wonder why and how. And also Look at this thing, it's so cool. The soil on Mars is toxic. It's not all bad though. Mars' soil contains perchlorate salts chemicals that are really good at absorbing water, and they've been found all over the Martian surface. Scientists first discovered them thanks to the Phoenix Mars lander in 2008. These salts can lower the freezing point of water. This means that even in the super cold temperatures on Mars, perchlorates could help keep water in a liquid state. So finding these salts means there might be briny water just below the surface, which also means there's a chance there could be life on the red planet. But perchlorates are also toxic to most forms of life. On Earth, they can disrupt thyroid function in humans and are harmful to a lot of plants and animals. Who knows what kind of life could exist up there that could handle the stuff though. Plus, another interesting aspect of these salts is that they release oxygen when heated. This could be incredibly useful for future manned missions to Mars. We could have a way of generating oxygen for breathing and fuel. Next up, volcanoes. Ancient volcanoes that once existed proudly on Mars and all of their active glory, but that are now buried deep beneath the surface of the planet. Not only that, but it is believed that these newly discovered volcanoes once erupted from underneath the surface of the ice. When this happened, it was not uncommon for the eruption to punch a hole clear through the ice layer, concealing the volcano, and deposit large amounts of ash into the air, leaving behind a distinct trail of minerals and other compounds. Minerals like tritomite, which support science's theory as its large quantities on Mars point to heavy volcanic history in Mars. Imagine owning a crystal that formed as the result of a volcanic eruption on Mars. I feel like that's when you know you've truly made it. Either that or that's when you know that we screwed up our own planet so bad that we had to evacuate and now we're just surrounded by the crystal because we live on Mars. Like I said, either or. In 2012, all these strange cloud-like plumes were spotted by amateur astronomers shooting up from the surface. So what is going on here? Scientists have a few theories, but none of them are 100% definitive. One is that these plumes could be related to some sort of volcanic activity, even though Mars's known volcanoes are believed to be now inactive. Another possibility is that they're caused by solar wind interacting with the Martian atmosphere, creating this kind of aurora-like phenomenon, but these plumes are incredibly high, much higher than what we'd expect from interactions like that. The plumes could also be related to dust storms. Mars is famous for its dust storms, some of which can envelop the entire planet. These storms could potentially be kicking up dust high into the atmosphere, creating the plume-like formations. But again, the altitude of the plumes is much higher than what we'd see with typical dust storms. All right, you guys, this last one isn't so much of a discovery made by the Mars rover as it is a theory put forth by all of you. Well, not all of you, but some of you for sure. Anyways, it goes like this. 
Is it at all possible, given the nature of Mars's past, flowing oceans, four seasons, volcanoes, gravity, and familiar minerals and compounds, that at one point we already lived there? I mean, think about it. Maybe at one point humans inhabited Mars, but then we messed it up so bad that we had to come to Earth. And then the asteroid hit that killed the dinosaurs, we get sent back to the Dark Ages, and now here we are trying to do it all over again, only opposite. I mean, based off of our research, Mars was clearly more inhabitable back then than it is now. And you can also apparently grow crops on Mars. So while the theory is out there, so is Mars, and maybe so were we at one point. You never know, you know? Well, we hope you've all enjoyed this uh, trip out to space. In a couple years, <laughs> we're apparently gonna be landing on uh, Mars. Well, they're gonna try oh, and do a, they're gonna try and do a crewed mission. Yeah. We'll see well, how It only that takes goes. about six months to get a satellite up there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not uh, it's yeah. not a ridiculous amount of time, but again. I look forward to the day, it should be interesting. I hope none of my loved ones decide to head up to Mars, though. I feel like it's kind of a permanent vacation. <laughs> if certain loved ones, I'd be fine to. Ah, see ya. With all that said, uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.